go into the world and tell every man that you meet there is a man on the cross a catholic take what you need to know right now a bold synthesis of inspiration and information keeping you up to date on the news and issues from a courageous catholic perspective a Catholic Take with Joe McLean starts now. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Praise be to God. Back in the home studio. Boy, does it feel good to be back here. We have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to be talking about something. I got to share something with you that you may not know. You might know, but you might not know either. Did you know that there were prophecies back in 1610? that pertain to our time today, the 19th and 20th and the 21st century. I'm talking about Our Lady of One Successo de Purificacion. I'm talking about Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres and what she received on the fourth apparition. I mean, her life was just utterly incredible. I'm going to share a taste of that with you at 15 past the hour because I think we're living some of this right now, and I think some of these prophecies really do scratch where it itches most so stick around for that that's coming up at 15 past the hour 30 past the hour michael hitchborn from the lepanto institute is back his report is out he's been hitting the news he's been hitting the streets he's been all over the country this past week well he's on with us at 30 past to talk about his report on the catholic health care system that's been doing trans surgeries trans therapies abortions and other issues there's an entire detailed report with showing all the receipts, as they say, and that's coming up at 30 past the hour. So a lot to talk about today, a lot to get into. We, of course, will leave links to everything we talk about on our website at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. So as soon as the show goes off the air, Jake, the producer, puts the show notes up at thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. Let's pray. Let's get into it. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left in aided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and now your Saint of the Day. Saint Juliana Falconieri, pray for us. Juliana was born, almost miraculously late in the marriage, to a pious older noble couple in Florence in 1270. Her saintly uncle, Alexis Falconieri, was one of the seven holy founders of the Servite Order, or the Order of Servants of Mary. He greatly influenced Juliana's own piety, and from another saint, Philip Benizi, She received the founding habit of the Third Order of the Servites, or the Mantellate Sisters, which were eventually established formally in the early 14th century with Juliana as the first mother superior, serving as such until her death. Though she was plagued with regular digestive illnesses all her life, she remained a cheerful and enthusiastic servant of her fellow sisters and the sick and poor for whom they cared. It was said that out of pure modesty, she never even looked a man in the face, and she had such a pious horror of sin that she would nearly faint at the very mention of it. After decades of unceasing service to the sick, as well as profound mortification and other acts of charity, Juliana died in her convent in the year 1341. On her deathbed, she suffered constant vomiting and was unable to receive the Blessed Sacrament. But she asked the priest to spread a corporal over her breast and simply lay the host upon it. After a few moments, the host disappeared and Juliana breathed her last. Left imprinted on her breast, was the exact same image of a cross that had adorned the host. Hailed as a saint immediately, especially by her order, Juliana was canonized in 1737 by Clement XII. St. Juliana Falconieri, pray for us. And now your headline news. Breitbart reports federal court rules in favor of Maine lobstermen over punitive regulations set by the National Marine Fisheries Service. A federal appeals court invalidated regulations set by the National Marine Fisheries Service, which marine lobstermen or Maine lobstermen said could put them out of business. 
These new regulations would cut the number of lobster traps allowed in half and require fishermen to switch to new gear. However, the court found that the service's opinion is contrary to law. Judge Douglas Ginsburg wrote for the court when striking down the regulation. The regulations set by the National Marine Fisheries Service are influenced by the agency's goal to protect the endangered North Atlantic right whale. However, Maine Lobstermen Association said that right whales aren't found off the coast of Maine, and there has not been a documented right whale entanglement associated with Maine lobstermen since 2004. The Post Millennial reports one dead, 28 injured in shooting at Chicago area Juneteenth event. One person was killed and at least 28 were injured in a shooting at a Juneteenth celebration in Willowbrook, Illinois, near Chicago. Police told reporters that at least 10 of the injured were taken to local hospitals, two of whom were in critical condition, while others suffered graze wounds. The shooting took place in a parking lot outside a shopping center in what officers are calling an illicit street takeover in which 200 to 300 people were gathered. Juneteenth is a recently created national holiday that has been celebrated in Texas and within the black community prior to its national recognition. It commemorates the anniversary of those who were enslaved in Texas, learning that they had been freed by Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation two years after the fact. LifeSite News reports L.A. Dodgers protest rally dwarfs support for blasphemous Pride Night. The massive rally in Los Angeles against the Dodgers honoring of anti-Catholic drag nuns drew several thousand people and dwarfed the turnout for the Drag Queens Award Ceremony in what protest organizers are celebrating as a huge success. In fact, more than 5,000 participants showed up for the prayer rally outside Dodger Stadium on Friday, according to Catholics for Catholics, a Phoenix-based group that organized the event. John Yep, the group's CEO, described the rally as a victory for Catholics and a wake-up call for the U.S. bishops, adding that, quote, we won't wait for them to lead anymore, close quote. However, Bishop Joseph Strickland of Tyler, Texas, led the prayer rally, which began at 3 p.m. Pacific time, and a procession outside the stadium protesting and making reparation for the Dodgers' celebration of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And those are your headline news. You might catch the John Yep interview uh, on our YouTube channel, by the way. We'll link to it in the show notes today, the stationacross.com forward slash ACT. The gospel today comes to us from Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 42. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Ignatius Catholic Study Bible today says, Jesus forbids the misuse of Mosaic law to justify private vengeance. Exodus 21-24 was meant to limit retribution. It was never an invitation to inflict punishment for personal injuries or extend, extend personal vengeance beyond the injury suffered. The punishment had to fit the crime but not exceed it. Jesus eliminates such a policy of retaliation from personal life. See, for instance, Romans 12, 17. St. Gregory the Great, a 6th century pope, said, There are who are so far to be endured as they rob us of our worldly goods, but there are whom we ought to hinder, and that without breaking the law of charity, not only that we may not be robbed of what is ours, but lest they be robbing others, destroy themselves. And in other words, we have to make judgment calls here. You can't just let people rob you blindly all the time. There are certain circumstances where you, you just say, whatever, it's just a material thing, you know, that, you know whatever, I'm not going to put my life at risk or the lives of others at risk. But there are other times where we have to stand, stand for justice. That's what St. Gregory's talking about here. 
We ought, he says, we ought to fear much more for the men who rob us than to be eager to save the in, inanimate things that they take from us. We should fear much more for the men, he says. Not fear the men, but fear for the men, for their salvation, I think he's speaking of. He goes on to say, when peace with our neighbor is banished, the heart on the matter of worldly possessions, it is plain that our estate is more loved than our neighbor. So we have to put first things first, priorities for the salvation of souls over our material goods. St. Augustine had a lot to say today. I mean, good. He could, I think the man wrote a book just on this one topic. Here's part of it. He says, this law, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, was enacted to repress the flames of mutual hate and to be a check on their undisciplined spirits. For who, when he would take revenge, was ever content to return just so much harm as he had received, right? I know. It's like, there's no, mm, we always want to do more, right? We got to go, we got to check that thing and go above and beyond. We got to give them more than they gave us. I think that's what Augustine is talking about. Do we not see men who have suffered more trifling hurt straight away, plot murder, thirst for blood, and hardly find evil enough that they can do to their enemies for the satisfying their rage? Just think about road rage, for instance. How quickly things escalate, like, say, at Juneteenth parties in Chicago or in my own temper, because I lose it all the time over trifle things. We must check. We must check our anger, lest it get out of control so fast. Amen. Let us meditate upon that today. Coming up after the break, I need to share with you a bit of the signs of the end times prophesied back in 1610 to an incredible woman in Ecuador. It's all coming up next. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. It's so good to be on with you. Praise be to God. Coming up at 30 past the hour, Michael Hitchborn is back on the program to talk about his latest report Largest Catholic Health Network performs same sex oper- same sex change operations, but it gets worse than that. Actually, this report, a very detailed, showing all the receipts kind of report, lists all of these hospitals and it's sex change therapies, it's the actual surgeries, it's abortions, contraception, and so much more. In fact, there's there's one Virginia Mason Medical Center checks all the boxes, and they're not good boxes. All of that and more is coming up with Michael Hitchborn from the Lepanto Institute. Do join us if you can. But there are lots of stories in the news that are a great concern to me, and I'm sure they are to you as well. Here's a story that I saw over the weekend. It says, open the pod bay doors, Bezos. Amazon shuts down man's entire smart home after delivery worker claims racism. I'll summarize this for you, but... It was a house. It had the Amazon uh, Puck, you know, the little Echo device, the Alexa thingy dingy. Like, it's got one of those, right? It's also got the Amazon doorbell ringer, right? So you can see, you can video footage. You can, from anywhere on planet Earth with your phone, you can see who's at your door. You can talk to them directly. Well, an Amazon guy came in sort of late at night, actually, dropped off a package. And apparently there was nobody there at the time. And the doorbell gave an automatic response. The driver claimed it was racism. So the driver reported the home back to home office and an executive at Amazon shut off all of their connected services. All of them. The ringer, the puck, his online connected services with his Amazon account and so much more. Just like that. Shut it off. The guy had to call and just say, hey, what's going on here to find out the driver accused him of racism? Only to go back and look at the archive and prove, in fact, that didn't happen at all. Nothing could be further from the truth. It took days to get his services back. And as I was reading the story, I thought, golly gee whiz, look how dependent we are upon these connected devices. And immediately what popped in my brain was Our Lady of One Successo, of the, uh, the, of the purification, Our Lady of Good Success, 
of the purification. Why did this pop into my head? Because it's a contribution of many things going on in our life that all come together, like, say, for instance, the drag queen stories, the endless amounts of transgender ideology stories in the news today are off the charts. You can't scroll through a news column without getting some sort of LGBT this, trans that, crazy nonsense, the wars, the rumors of wars, the scandals within the church, the the corruption of youth is really getting worse and worse by the day. And again, what popped in my head was Our Lady of Good Success. Our Lady of Good Success, Our Lady of One Success de Purificación of Ecuador, Our Lady of Quito, Ecuador. Now, you may not know about this story, or you might know about this story. There is a great book that I would highly encourage you to uh, to check out. In fact, I'm going to link to it today. And it's this one, The Story of Our Lady of Good Success and Novena by Reverend Father Manuel Sousa Pieria. We're going to put a link to it in the description of the show notes today. If you go to the stationofthecross.com forward slash ACT, you'll find the links there. But uh, let me just uh, show share with you a bit of the video here. But before I do... I'm going to play this clip for you so you can get a sense of the prophecies that are involved in hap- that happened in the year 1610 to Mother Mariana, uh, a, an incredible, an incredible woman born in Spain. She, she went across the sea to great Talmud. She had many visions of the devil trying to attack her and her sisters. This woman went through so much in her young life. In fact, she endured the pains of hell in order to save the soul of one of her mortal enemies, a woman who was who was determined to uh, imprison, to punish, and to even kill Mother Mariana. And Mother Mariana volunteered to suffer the torments of hell in order to save this woman. And in fact, the Lord gave her this opportunity, and the woman will remain in purgatory until the end of time. The story is utterly amazing and incredible, but there are prophecies that this young visionary, this young mystic, received in the year 1610 that apply to our times today. The TFP has made a video that summarizes this well. The book goes into greater detail. Again, we're going to link to that. But let me roll this clip for you to give you some taste of the prophecies of Our Lady of Ecuador, Our Lady of uh, Quito in Ecuador. Our Lady said to Mother Mariana that in the future, Unbridled passions will give way to a total corruption of customs because Satan will reign through the Masonic sects, targeting... Do you hear that? The Satan will reign through the Masonic sects. This was the year 1610. That would not even begin to be a thing until 1760-something. So, I mean, this was a full 100-plus years before any of that ever happened. She would never have known that otherwise. And the children in particular to ensure general corruption... Oh, how it hurts me to tell you that there will be many and enormous public and hidden sacrileges. The sacrament of matrimony, which symbolizes the union of Christ with the church, will be thoroughly attacked and profaned. Masonry, then reigning, will implement iniquitous laws aimed at extinguishing this sacrament. Divorce on demand. How much has the church acquiesced to divorce on demand in our culture today? I myself am a product of many divorces, actually. My parents having been divorced and then remarried and divorced again. So we all know the story. It's a familiar story. My generation thinks it normal now. That has been a major problem, let alone the attack on marriage uh, just with the LGBTQ ideology of today. When is the last time you heard an incredibly strong and powerful defense of marriage between a man and a woman trying to raise their children in the sacraments by the by the bishops today. I mean, some do, but not all. Why is that not a united front? Why is that not an all hands on deck, we must hold the line kind of an argument from the hierarchy of the church today? It isn't. And there's so much within the church that would be happy to wink, wink, nudge, nudge, nod, nod, synodality. Let's just accept them as they are and give a pass to this type of crazy in our world today. That's what this is going on. That's what the the prophecy is talking about. They will make it easy for all to live in sin, thus multiplying the birth of illegitimate children without the church's blessing. Secular education will contribute to a scarcity of priestly and religious vocations. The holy sacrament of holy orders will be ridiculed, oppressed, and despised. For in this, both the church and God himself are oppressed and reviled. 
And I got to tell you, ever since the uh, or the 2001 church sex scandal out of Boston, which I've shared with you my own experience of having lived through that while living up there at the time, you know, ever since then, it, you can't go anywhere. You can't. I, every time I comment online about the Catholic faith or whatever, I I always get blasted for those pedophile priests, those pedophile child molesting priests. Right. I mean, it's a common story now. Is that not what this prophecy basically just said? That the priesthood would be maligned, the priesthood would be denigrated, the priesthood would be attacked, and it's an attack against God himself. Because it isn't just a gray-haired man in Rome wearing white that de- that determines that there ought to be priests, but it was God himself, the God-man, Jesus Christ, who instituted the priesthood in the upper room, something I've talked about many times on the show. So this prophecy in 1610 is basically telling us our own times right now since he is represented by his priests. The devil will work to persecute the ministers of the Lord in every way, working with baneful cunning to destroy the spirit of their vocation and corrupting many. Those who will thus scandalize the Christian flock will bring upon all priests the hatred of bad Christians and the enemies of the one holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. This apparent triumph of Satan will cause enormous suffering to the good pastors of the church, and to the supreme pastor and vicar of Christ on earth. How many have left the priesthood as a result to the sex abuse scandals within the church? How many? I, many. The answer is many. Um, just think about the Legionnaire scandal. It's founder Maciel who molested so many to include his own biological children. Many left the Legionnaires as a result to that scandal becoming public let alone the, the scandals within the church that now are paid out millions and millions of dollars because of, of the scandals of so many who were allowed to continue in their priesthood, allowed to have access to children and be shoved, you know, shuffled around their diocese by other priests, bishops, and hierarchy. It's a, it's a grave, evil scandal. And it is reverberated through the consequences of how that scandal, that public scandal, has affected so many others. Which is why the summer of shame, uh, when Cardinal, uh, former Cardinal McCarrick, you know, got finally reported and finally put a, a suspended. Um, why it was such a grave scandal to so many, to include myself. That was the summer for me where I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't just pretend that the sky is blue and the sun is shining and everything is happy go lucky. And we just got to, you know, keep going, talking about all the good stuff, the fluffy bunny stuff and ignore all the difficulty. That one for me was what changed. We can do this no more. This prophecy in 1610 is a prophecy for our time. Earth, who a prisoner in the Vatican will shed secret and bitter tears in the presence of God our Lord, asking for light, sanctity, and perfection for all the clergy of the world, to whom he is king and father. Unhappy times will come wherein those who should fearlessly defend the rights of the church will instead, blinded despite the light, give their hand to the church's enemies and do their bidding. But when evil seems triumphant and when authority abuses its power, committing all manner of injustices and oppressing the weak, their ruin shall be near. They will fall and crash to the ground. Then will the church, joyful and triumphant like a young girl, reawaken and be comfortably cradled in the arms of my most dear and elect son of those times. If he lends an ear to the inspirations of grace, one of which will be the reading of these great mercies that my son and I have had toward you, we shall fill him with graces and very special gifts and will make him great on earth and much greater in heaven. There we have reserved a precious seat for him because, heedless of men, he will have fought for truth and ceaselessly defended the rights of the church, deserving to be called martyr. At the end of the 19th century and throughout a great part of the 20th, many heresies will be propagated in these lands. The small number of souls who will secretly safeguard the treasure of faith and virtues will suffer a cruel, unspeakable, and long martyrdom. Many will descend to their graves through the violence of suffering and will be counted among the martyrs who sacrificed themselves for the country and the church. To be delivered from the slavery of these heresies, those whom the merciful love of my son has destined for this restoration will need great willpower, perseverance, courage, and confidence in God. One thing I got to point it out. 
a, a minute ago. He said, and then he's reading the prophecies. Again, the book I'm linking to is greater detail on all of this. This is just a summary. But the prophecy was when the bishops decide to courageously defend uh, the church's teaching in society, lead like men, lead like fathers, their sons, the priests, the clergy, and the laity will get behind them. Find courage, speak boldly, speak truth, and the faithful will follow. Is that not what happened in uh, Dodger Stadium on Friday? In the face of grave error, in the face of grave evil that would destroy innocence itself, the prophecies go into greater detail, detail and depth about the attempt to destroy innocence, to destroy youth, to destroy virginity itself, and how Holy Mother Church, through a courageous pope and a courageous bishop and a courageous priest and a courageous laity, standing up to these grave errors, can bring about a good and beautiful reality of hope You want a brighter day? You want hope? Then we have to act like brave Catholics who are prepared to be martyrs for the faith. That is the essence of the prophecy in 1610 in Ecuador. If you've never heard of it, you got to dive deep. you got to know about this prophecy. We're going to link to it. Check out the show notes. We'll be right back. Hear what listeners are saying about the free iCatholic Radio mobile app. Through the iCatholic Radio app, I have listened to the sermons and teachings several times. The effect has been a deeper understanding of my faith and Catholic tradition. This app has truly been a blessing in my life and has increased my faith. Listen live or at your convenience to your favorite shows. Just search for iCatholic Radio in your app store today. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and here are your headline news. Daily Fetched reports feds quietly drop charges against Democrat donor SBF in multi-billion dollar FTX scam. Sam Bankman-Fried, or SBF, the disgraced founder of collapsed FTX crypto exchange and the second biggest Democrat donor in the 2022 midterms, had several charges against him dropped by the feds. Crypto giant FTX went bankrupt last year, losing billions and wrecking the lives of thousands of crypto investors. On Tuesday, SBF pleaded not guilty in New York to an additional eight charges related to the collapse of his former crypto exchange FTX and hedge fund Alameda Research. However, federal prosecutors announced on Thursday that they would drop several several of those charges. The Associated Press reports heat wave triggers big storms. Power outages in U.S. Southeast raises wildfire concerns. Triple-digit temperatures prompted heat advisories across much of the southern United States, triggered thunderstorms that knocked out power from Oklahoma to Mississippi and whipped up winds that raised wildfire threats in Arizona and New Mexico. A suspected tornado uh, struck near Scranton, Arkansas, early on Sunday, destroying chicken houses and toppling trees onto homes, the National Weather Service said. There were no immediate reports of serious injuries. Meteorologists said that the dangerous and potential record-breaking temperatures would continue into midweek over southern Texas and much of the Gulf Coast. Storms producing damaging winds, hail, and possibly tornadoes could strike the lower Mississippi Valley. Catholic News Agency reports U.S. bishops vote to tackle trans. The U.S. bishops voted Friday to move forward with a significant revision to their document offering guidance to Catholic health care institutions on the issue of transgender surgeries and hormone treatments and their incompatibility with the church's teaching on sex and the dignity of the human person. Well, praise be to God, that's good news. And those are your headline news. Special shout out to our 300 Club members listening on ICR. Good morning to you, iCatholic Radio. I appreciate having you guys on the team today. Thanks for doing it. Uh, You can always listen to the Catholic Radio, you know, 24-7, clear as crystal, right on your phone. Anytime you want, just download the iCatholic Radio app. You can watch the uh, live video feed for today's program, for instance. You can get the podcast of our show. There's other shows like Father Mateg and Mother Miriam and a bunch of others. You can check them all out right in your app. Just download the iCatholic Radio app in your iOS and Android and join the ICR 300 team every morning right here 
on the program. We're, we're going to link to that over on the website, thestationofthecross.com forward slash ACT. Joining us now once again is our good friend Michael Hitchborn from the Lepanto Institute. Good morning to you, Michael. Good morning, Joe. Good morning to your listeners. And praise be to God. Glad to have you guys on the team today. Uh, did you make it to the Dodger Stadium on Friday? Unfortunately, I didn't. I uh, I had to take a flight home uh, while they were doing the event, but <laughs> uh, that was that was a, an adventure in and of itself. I know you were trying hard to get there. I mean, we were texting each other last week, and you were you you've been all over the country. You've been on a big tour. What's going on? Well, I went out to San Diego to protest the Association of U.S. Catholic Priests, uh, the dissident organization that is pushing women's ordination and uh, homosexuality in the priesthood, and even calling for a change in the Catholic ethic for human sexuality and human sexual behavior. Uh, that's a direct quote from their late, latest document on uh, wow. on homosexuality. And, uh, I mean, these, these, these guys are just absolute off, off the rails, and unfortunately they've got top cover from a lot of bishops and cardinals in the United States. <clears throat> We live in, in uh, we live in crazy times. Uh, in the last segment, I was sharing a bit of the prophecy that came out of uh, Quito, Ecuador in 1610. Mm. And it's like reading the headlines today. Corruption of children in Catholic schools was a part of the prophecy. The Freemasonic sex trying to destroy marriage. Uh, you see corruption within the hierarchy. The, you know, the dismantling of the authority of the hierarchy through scandals. I mean, just it just seems like that prophecy had so much to do with our day and our time. It's even mentioned the 19th and 20th century in those prophecies. So it, it, we live in crazy times today. And you would never think that the Catholic hierarchy or anybody associated with the Catholic hierarchy would support these things. But they do every single day. You just got to go on Twitter. And you can, They're happy to say this publicly. They don't even hide in the shadows mm-hmm. now. And now your report is out about the largest... Catholic Health Network performs same-sex operations. But I got to tell you, Michael, your report is way more depressing than just that because it details that and it details even more. I mean, you're showing the receipts here. Uh, uh, Just the executive summary alone, I think, is worth the price of admission. But, like, I go through this list of every hospital within that network and you've got all of these, like, bad things that they do, sex change surgeries, uh, hormone treatments, abortion, contraception, and one of these hospitals checks every single box. How is this even possible, Michael Hitchborn? Well, it's possible because the uh, the church has exchanged uh, true charity, which is drawing souls to Christ, uh, for profit-making industry. And that's, that's really at the crux of the problem, that uh, what used to be one of the charitable arms of the church, you know, healing the sick – is now just that it's just it's just a profit uh, or a profitable industry and and uh they've turned away from the religious orders that used to to run these kind of institutions to help people to to make them well so that they can properly worship our lord and they they've been taken over they've been taken over by the industrial complex that is big medicine and now you have i mean it is the largest catholic health network in the country they are performing transgender surgeries, and what's more, they have Catholic hospitals that are referring for transgender operations and, uh, you know, the, the replacement, the hormones for sex change therapies, and even giving puberty blockers to kids, which is one of the most diabolical elements of the entire thing. Yeah, my mind is racing with so many things. One is, how is this... Like, how are we just finding out about this? You know what I mean? Like, how does this creep up on you? It's a large Catholic network of hospitals in our country. One would think the bishops would have known about this, you know, early in the process and did something about it. I mean, I just read an article out of the CNA. I reported on it in in the news segment. Bishops are like trying to get more bold in in their statements. And that's nice and all. But is that enough? No, they, they, they really have to grab the reins and take control. Uh, coming out with a statement saying, we're sad that this happened, or it's upsetting that this is going on, is ridiculous. Uh, what happened to the St. Patrick's of the world who formally condemned individuals who were doing extremely wicked things? Uh, and now they've got extremely wicked things happening under their own authority 
and they aren't even lifting a finger to do something about that. And this is what's really horrifying. I mean, they are financing organizations like the Campaign for Human Development, which is giving funds to the enemies of the church. They are financing organizations like Catholic Relief Services, which is going overseas and implementing government programs to spread contraception and contraceptive ideologies. And, you know, they they hear the reports, the reports I put out on these things, and they either don't believe them or they try to dismiss them because it's big money. And when big it comes money. to the Catholic hospitals, you know, they've got the transgender stuff going on. And they, they have the, the, in a sense, they have an authority to stop it. They can strip their Catholic hospitals of their Catholic identity. They can also file um, uh, canonical charges against common spirit with the Vatican and say, this is not a Catholic institution. It does not deserve to have the Catholic name. But so far, it's just crickets. Now, I believe the, the story I reported on last week was, uh, was it St. Francis out in san francisco that was mm-hmm. uh, performing the surgery they had like a video like a promotion video of one of their customers that kind of thing was it in san francisco yes, yes that's did corleone did bishop Hospital. did bishop corleone speak out against that uh he has not but the uh the spokesman for the archdiocese of san francisco issued a clarification of the pillar catholic simply saying well that wasn't a catholic hospital um it follows a different set of rules under common spirits uh merger with dignity health and all this stuff and i'm sitting going wait a minute um common spirit health raised millions of dollars and gave them to the St. Francis Memorial Hospital. There are Catholic hospitals in the Common Spirit Network that are referring patients to St. Francis Memorial Hospital for their transgender surgeries. You know, there it, there are no clean hands here. And to simply issue a clarification that, well, this isn't a Catholic hospital makes no difference. It's still a part of Common Spirit, and it's still doing these horrible, evil things. So at the end of the day, why why isn't there a much stronger reaction to this? I mean, um, as I, I've been married, I've been critical. To give you some sort of context, I've been critical of uh, bishops like uh, Colonel Burke, or Cardinal uh, Mueller, or others who have spoken out against the boldly spoken out. I would say against the, you know the scandals within the church, and and uh, yet I've been critical of them. And some will say, Joe, well, what is it you want them to do? Well, I, writing another book is not going to help. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. I want to see action. I want to see action. Words go only so far. Let's see some action here. Um, and I kind of feel the same way here. So you listed a couple things a minute ago, but like really what ought to happen? If you could do anything to solve this problem today, Michael Hitchborn, what would it be? If I had the authority, it, well, common spirit would be stripped of its Catholic identity. That's, that's rule number one. Uh, honestly, I think that even, if the bishops had control of this monster, they wouldn't be able to stop the, the, the horror show that's taking place. The, so the only thing left is really to strip it of its Catholic identity and to disaffiliate 100%. Um, that would be step one. Step two would be for the diocese and for the bishops to lead public acts of reparation because of the grave evil that is being perpetrated in the name of the church. Uh, it is a scandal beyond scandals, and I, I just can't imagine what this looks like through the eyes of our Lord. Why do you think more bishops don't publicly lead these acts of reparation, publicly stand firm? I mean, this is what I would want to see. Bishops standing out in the public square, proclaiming the truth in spite of whatever may come, and just being bold, because when they do that, the lay faithful, they get energized. They love seeing bishops act boldly and be bold in public, especially when it means to stand for truth. I was going through the Gospels today and they and uh, the commentary today. And St. Gregory the Great, St. Augustine, they all talk about this need to proclaim truth to your neighbor. And like if someone robs you, feel bad for the robber because he could be going to hell. Like that's the mm-hmm. sentiment of St. Gregory the Great. And yet today, too many are like, well, let's just meet them where they're at. You know, let's, it's just okay. You know, I mean, well, listen, we're all in a str- we're all struggle. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. But some of us go to confession to try to get, try to make up for that. And others don't. And we shouldn't give a pass. 
I think that there are multiple layers to why the bishops aren't more bold about things like this. Number one, I, I, I wonder if they actually possess the true faith. I, I do wonder. I, I, I'm not saying they don't, but actions speak louder than words. And when you don't act as if you truly believe that people are going to hell, then people are going to be left to wonder if you really believe that people actually go to hell. Um, <clears throat> so that's step one. Number two, I think that part of the real problem here is that the bishops are too focused on human respect. I think they, they are looking for that adulation that they desire, and they don't want to step on too many toes because it won't get them invited to too many parties. Uh, that's a very sad fact. Look at New York. Um, do you really think the Met Gala is going to invite Cardinal Dolan if he were to start condemning the horrible, the horrible imagery that they put forth at the, uh, the Met Gala? Of course not. Um, so it, human respect is a big factor. It, it, there, there are oh, many yeah. things that, that get involved with this. Oh, boy. You're so right. Our Lady of Quito in Ecuador said these priests who in this manner will scandalize the faithful will cause the hatred of these same faithful and the enemies of the Catholic, Apostolic and Roman Church to fall upon all priests. This apparent triumph of Satan will bring with it enormous sufferings upon the good prelates of the church and the overall majority of good priests and upon the supreme shepherd and vicar of Christ on earth who being a prisoner in the Vatican will shed secret and bitter tears in the presence of his God and Lord, asking for light, holiness, and perfection for the clergy of the whole world. Bad things happen when we don't stand up for truth. More on that coming up after this quick break. Michael Hitchborn is our guest. Stick around. We'll be right back. Speed of Jesus Christ, welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean. So good to be on with you. Praise be to God. Coming up at the top of the hour, we say goodbye to the radio. We stay on for the after show and hang out with you directly. You get to drive the conversation. I wonder what you think about all of this or whether or not you've ever heard of Our Lady of, of Quito in Ecuador in the year 1610, giving these prophecies that seem to just ring so very true today. Uh, you know, I'd love to know. So you can hang out in the after show. All you got to do is go to the station of the cross.com forward slash ACT. You'll see the live video feed there. And there's links to uh, some of the social feeds where you can go and comment directly. But it's the telegram group that uh, we love the most because they're the they're the insiders hanging out with us all the time. 24 seven. You can join the telegram group by getting on to the email list. The Insiders List, which is also linked on the website at the station of the cross dot com forward slash ACT. But joining us right now by phone again is Michael Hitchborn from the Lapanto Institute talking about his brand new report that's out on uh, the largest <laughs> Catholic health network performs same sex change operations or sex change operations rather. And it's uh, it's really it's really difficult to get through. And as I was quoting, as we're going to the break, Our Lady of, of Quito in Ecuador, 1610, she talked about priests who loved money more than they loved their their faith. And the, the, the unbridled luxury of our times would corrupt so many. And children would be the ones that would be the most victims. And aren't we seeing that? Aren't we seeing that? Not only just in the same, or the same sex scandal within the Catholic Church, but we're seeing that in society as a whole. This great desire to corrupt souls. And um, Michael, I saw an article that came out, I think it was the, the, over the weekend or at the end of the last week, here, Epic Times, who broke your story, by the way. Congratulations, Epic. You know, this article says, wearing shirts saying there are only two genders is not protected speech. This was a kid wearing a shirt to school and he got in trouble for it. There are only two genders is what it says on his shirt. And a judge says he's that's not protected speech. You're not allowed to have that. Michael, we live in a time where you're not allowed to say there are two genders. We live in a time where <laughs> Republicans are just as bad as Democrats. And how many Catholics give themselves over to Republican or Democrat ideology instead of being informed by their Catholic faith, let the chips fall where they may. We live in a time where like Chris Christie or or many other Republicans will embrace errors like abortion, same-sex marriage, and so many other ills in society. 
Uh, and yet so many Catholics are rationalizing and justifying these choices, are they not? Oh, they sure are. And again, this goes back to the human respect matter where everybody wants to kind of go along to get along. They don't want to have any real strife. They'll push an agenda or they'll say, you know, we, we disagree on this particular matter, but let's talk about it. Well, you don't talk to somebody who thinks that the best way to heat their house is to burn your house down. There, there's no conversation to be had. And, and that's kind of where we are. That there are so many in society now that want to have this dialogue about grave moral evils upon which there really is no dialogue. It's either uh, this is horribly evil and there's nothing to talk about or, well, we need to find some way to compromise on this. You can't compromise. You can't compromise. That's true. But yet we always do. How many how many Catholics running for office have to live by compromise? I'll never forget listening to Newt Gingrich talk about that some many years ago now. Mm. You know, and he tried to say, Well, we have to compromise or we'll, else we'll never get anything done. But look where compromise has gotten us, Michael. Compromise has gotten us a society where divorce and remarriage is the norm. Nobody even pushes back on it anymore, let alone uh, all this other ideology that's crammed down our throat. Uh, the, the, these uh, these drag queen nuns, uh, you know, a hate group against Catholic Church gets accepted as normal in society. Drag queen story hours everywhere, let alone all the other evils of society. We have compromised too much. Isn't it time to try something different? Well, it's it's really funny. You know, our side, the, the simps on our side are all very much in favor of compromise and, well, we need to get along and, and, and all that kind of stuff. You know who doesn't compromise? The other side. <laughs> they don't compromise right. on anything. You know, you want to you wanna put in a, um, a restriction so that you aren't murdering babies the moment they're being born, and they scream bloody murder and they stand against you in a firm block they're not going to let you actually put together any measure that's going to say, you know what, maybe we shouldn't kill babies after they're born even. And and they, they'll stand against you on that because they can. And they don't yeah. care if you don't like it. Uh, the same thing with homosexuality, the same thing with transgenderism. They're not going to give an inch, but they expect us to compromise. And our side says, well, we'll not get anywhere if we don't compromise. Which is absurd because now you're dividing by half and you're never going to cross the line if you keep doing that. Patty, one of our uh, plank owners, uh, she was, she's been here since the beginning. She, she hails from uh, the Hill Country, Texas. And she asked a great question. She says, are these networks requiring Catholic workers in their networks to perform those evil deeds? So the, the employees at these hospitals that you mentioned at uh, at this uh, Catholic health care network you know, of hospitals, do they require their employees to perform the transgender surgeries or the therapies or abortions or contraception? Can, can doctors and nurses refuse in good conscience? So there, there are a couple of layers to this. Number one, <clears throat> to my knowledge, nobody is being forced to do anything regarding the transgender issue. However, I do know that some hospitals do require their, their, uh, doctors to prescribe contraception if it's asked for so there is uh there and, and it all depends on which state you're in too so uh there are multiple aspects to this and and the answer is well yes and no there are some instances where there there is that force against the conscience and then there are some instances where no they're not being forced but uh they are there are other elements though where they are being forced to comply with this gender ideology by referring to people by their preferred pronouns. Um, that is a, a rule. So you do have to abide by that. Um, morally speaking, you don't, but the, the hospital makes a regulation that says that you do. Uh, so, you know, there is this game that's being played where they say, well, you're, you're free until you disagree with our agenda, and then you're not free. Wow. I can't help but think about all the parallels in sacred scripture about the corruption of society, sexual morals, um, murder, corruption uh, in every level. And it goes hand in hand with chastisement, right? They, they always come with chastisements. And it's interesting in when you go to the prophecies of Our Lady of Quito in Ecuador in, in the 17th century, 1610, there is talk of secret chastisements that come that prevent people from receiving last rites. Does this not sound mm -hmm. like the great pandemic we just went through? How many souls 
went uh, to their deathbed without receiving last rites? And how many bishops spoke out demanding the right to provide that sacrament to the dying? And how many were silent on that, Michael Hedgeborn? Not just silent. How many actually stood up and said, no, you are not allowed to give the last rites to individuals who are in this situation? Cardinal Supich. You know, yeah. uh, there there are several bishops that actually denied the ability to administer last rites. Uh, they even tried doing ridiculous things like allowing hospital uh, workers to administer the last rites on behalf of the doctor or, or on behalf <laughs> of the priests. Even wow. use since making implements so that they could try and administer the sacrament from a distance without touching the individual. I'm sorry, but you have to touch the person. That's part of the uh, that's part of the ritual. Um, it, it doesn't work otherwise, and it, it's they're they're monkeying with every element of the sacrament, mm. and it, it's abominable. I, I listened once to a uh, a priest give a talk at the Buffalo Catholic Men's Conference a couple years ago. He talked about how he got called to the hospital when the AIDS pandemic broke out, and they were had to wear hazmat suits to visit the patients. And the bishop he was with took his hazmat suit off in order to uh, administer last rites to a dying patient, not knowing if he would personally get sick or not because they didn't know at the time it was true, how it all got transmitted. Turns out it was transmitted through homosexual activity. But I think we need that kind of courage in a day and an age where they give themselves over to this darkness. Michael Hitchborn, your report is detailed. It's difficult, but it's true. And we appreciate your clarity on this. Thank you, Michael Hitchborn, for being on with us today. Thanks so much for having me on. God bless you. God bless your audience. LapontoIN.org. LapontoIN.org. We'll link to it. God bless you and God love you.